Several years ago, Gensys Labs developed a virus known as ALZ113 to test on chimpanzees. This caused them to show aggressive behaviors that then led to a major incident at the Golden Gate Bridge where the chimpanzees had a standoff with the police. The standoff resulted in the chimpanzees' escape and disappearance in the woods. The virus, dubbed as the simian flu, was accidentally exposed to humans, which slowly became a pandemic that led to a massive population decrease, possibly on the verge of human extinction. Many years later, the chimpanzees have now become apes and have evolved to develop communication methods and even form their own civilization. They can now band together, hunting food in large numbers and even showing active consciousness towards one another. Caesar is the leader of their tribe. His son, Blue Eyes, joins him on the hunt. After a successful hunt, they go home riding horses with their spoils. The civilization of the apes has taken the form of a tribal system deep in the woods. They have an education system for learning how to read and write alphabets. They have murals, wood-constructed structures, weapons for hunting, and even know how to light a fire. Upon reaching home, Caesar witnesses his wife giving birth to his second son and tells Blue Eyes about it. Caesar and the brown ape, who was teaching younglings earlier, named Maurice, have a reminiscent conversation of the achievements of their civilization. Maurice then brings up the topic of humans, whom Caesar had close relationships with in the past, asking him if he still thinks about them. Caesar replies that he sometimes does. Caesar explains the difference between the two creatures, humans destroy each other while apes unite as a family. Caesar wonders if humanity has become extinct, to which Maurice responds by telling Caesar that they haven't seen humans since the last decade. One day two apes are on their way home from hunting when they encounter a man. The man, intensely terrified at the sight of the apes, pulls out his gun to threaten the apes and shoots one of them. The gunshot angers the whole tribe, prompting them to travel to the site to take action. It turns out that the man is not alone, with him are six more people. After the tribe of apes arrive and surround them, the person leading the group, Malcolm, declares that they originally meant no harm. Malcolm, at the sight of Caesar, feels something off about the apes. After a short, intense gaze with the humans, Caesar shouts and tells the group to leave. The group of apes chases them away, scaring one of the humans enough for them to drop their bag. Maurice picks up the bag and hands it over to Caesar. Caesar commands one of his apes, Koba, and two of his subordinates to follow the humans to where they are settled. Malcolm and his men reach a quarantine checkpoint where their leader, Dreyfus, and a few soldiers are settled. They immediately report to Dreyfus about the situation regarding the dam. Malcolm tells Dreyfus that the dam, the reason they were up there, is good enough to generate power. However, there is another problem. On the way back to the settlement, the group tells Dreyfus about the apes and their evolution. Dreyfus tells them that they tell no one, as it would potentially cause mass panic. Ellie, Malcolm's wife and a former doctor, explains that the few humans left alive are genetically immune to the virus. Malcolm, Dreyfus, and the others reach the settlement. Meanwhile, Caesar and the apes have a meeting about the situation with the humans. Some apes want to go to war since the humans drew first blood, but Caesar wants a diplomatic way of dealing with the situation, saying that they will lose what they have built if they go to war. After the meeting, Koba tells Caesar about his unpleasant experience with the humans and insists on showing their superiority and strength. This prompts Caesar and the tribe to get on their horses and march into the human settlement to declare an announcement. When the apes arrive, the humans are visibly alarmed, but their curiosity prompts them to gather at the gate to meet the tribe. Caesar, without hesitation, declares that he doesn't want to go to war but is prepared to fight if they deem it necessary. Caesar issues a warning before the tribe leaves, returning the dropped bag, telling the humans never to return. Now the humans are in a state of panic, anxious about the potential threats the apes pose to them. But Dreyfus sympathetically delivers a speech to reassure them that they will find a way to live through it and find another source of power other than the dam. After the crowd settles, Malcolm tells Dreyfus that there's no other power source other than the dam. Willing to go through desperate measures, Dreyfus replies that they will have to fight the apes. He further explains that they need to reconnect and find other survivors around the world, and they need to generate power for their radio transmitter. Unwilling to let casualties increase, Malcolm suggests that Dreyfus give him three days to go back and talk it through with Caesar. Malcolm shows Dreyfus the bag that was returned to him to reassure further that Caesar is more than just an ape. Dreyfus tells him that if Malcolm fails, then he will have to resort to more drastic measures. Malcolm proceeds to prepare for the trip. He tells Ellie about his plan, and they, along with their son Alexander, Carver, the man who shot an ape, Foster, and Comp, head over to where the apes are. They arrive at the place on a rainy evening. Malcolm tells everyone to stay in the truck, and if he doesn't return in two hours, they should go back to the settlement without him. Malcolm heads off and arrives at the entrance, where he meets a bunch of angry apes. The apes drag Malcolm over to the tribe, where an entire ape civilization surrounds him. He raises both of his hands to express surrender. Then at the central tribal platform, Caesar shows himself to meet Malcolm. Malcolm immediately pleads to Caesar not to kill him and only wants to show Caesar something to understand his intentions. Caesar silences the crowd and listens to Malcolm's request. Malcolm, Caesar, and some apes head over to the dam. Malcolm tries his best to explain how they can restore power for the humans using the dam. 
To Malcolm's surprise, Caesar understands that they are trying to generate electricity. Malcolm further explains that they have no intention of harming the apes, if they did, they could kill him. Caesar agrees to let them do their work but on the condition that they surrender their guns. At the tribe, Koba expresses his disagreement with Caesar's decisions, explaining that the humans will be a potential threat if they are given power. Caesar tells him that he's only doing it for peace between humans and apes. Koba stubbornly insists that Caesar is wrong by showing his scars as a sign of human violence but is immediately silenced when Caesar expresses his superior demeanor. The next day, while the group begins to do their work under the supervision of Caesar, Koba and his subordinates head over to the human settlement without Caesar knowing. There, they sneakily discover the armory where the weapons are kept. While in the armory, Koba is spotted by two armed men, who immediately corner him. Left with no choice, Koba wittingly plays dumb, doing random primitive movements in front of the humans to fool them into thinking he is harmless. And as Koba expected, the confused men let Koba go free, thinking he is just a lost ape. Malcolm and the rest are working on the pipes when a loud accident happens. Debris falls, trapping them and injuring Carver's leg. This prompts the apes to check what happened, and they immediately help them clear the debris, rescuing Malcolm and his men. Malcolm thanks Caesar for saving him and the others, but due to the debris and the condition of Carver, he requests that they be given more time. Then, a baby ape, Caesar's second son, approaches the group and everyone stares in awe at it. The young ape then discovers a hidden gun from Carver's things, and this immediately causes the apes to go hostile. Carver promptly pulls the shotgun and threatens the apes when to his surprise, Caesar outclasses him with his strength, pulling the shotgun from him and knocking him down. Caesar is about to hit Carver with the gun, but Malcolm pleadingly tells Caesar to stop. Infuriated, Caesar points his gun at Malcolm, reminding him of his rule about guns. Caesar shows mercy by throwing the shotgun in the river and telling the group to leave immediately. While Malcolm and the group are packing, Malcolm hurries back to Caesar, hoping he can explain himself properly, and Ellie follows him. The apes take Malcolm and Ellie to Caesar's house, and they find out about his sick wife. Ellie empathetically offers her medicine to Caesar, to which Caesar agrees. As gratitude, Caesar allows them to stay for one more day and let his apes help them speed up the work. Carver is immediately kicked out and is forced to stay in the truck. Not long after, Koba and his subordinates arrive at the tribe to report to Caesar about the weapons. Koba then heads over to the dam and immediately assaults Alex. Malcolm pleads with Koba to stop, and, to everyone's surprise, Maurice defends them from Koba. Caesar then shows up. Koba starts questioning Caesar's decisions and leadership, telling him that he is irresponsible to his own kind by choosing the humans over them. This makes Caesar furious, and he assaults Koba, beating him up. Koba is unable to retaliate, and the fight is one-sided. Caesar almost chokes Koba but stops and remembers their principle that apes don't kill each other. Koba then gets on his feet and apologizes to Caesar. Later that night, Koba privately tells Blue Eyes that he should protect Caesar in his stead since Caesar no longer trusts Koba. Koba also tells him that he fears Caesar's trust in humans may threaten his own life. The following day, Maurice goes to meet Alex. Alex gives Maurice the book he reads as gratitude for defending him against Koba. The two happily share a good time, reading the book. During that same morning, Koba returns to the armory and meets the men from the other day drinking. Koba fools them once again, but this time, Koba snatches a gun, ends the men's lives, and takes the gun with him on the way back. Malcolm and the group finally finish fixing the generator in the dam. Later that night, the group and Caesar find a gasoline station in the woods with a convenience store. The group enjoys some music then Malcolm tells Caesar that they have finished their work and will finally go back home. Caesar tells Malcolm that he finally trusts them, and the two shake their hands. Caesar takes them back to the settlement to show them that the lights on their settlement have indeed been restored. Then just as everything is going well, Caesar spots an armed Koba sneaking in. Koba schemingly shoots Caesar and hides. One of his lackeys also starts a fire in the settlement burning the houses down. This causes panic among the apes. Maurice immediately realizes what's happening, telling Malcolm and the group to run and lead them out. Koba then takes the stage and frames the humans for killing Caesar and starting the fire. Koba then acts as their new leader and rallies the apes to start an invasion against the humans. Back in the power-restored city, the people are celebrating and partying. Dreyfus and his men finally start reaching out to other cities. While this is happening, the apes invade the armory and steal human weapons. Dreyfus immediately gets notified of the attack, so he evacuates the settlement, armed his forces, and prepares to defend. Dreyfus and his men wait in anticipation as the horde of apes approaches on their horses amidst the mist. The apes start firing, forcing Dreyfus and his men to take cover. Dreyfus immediately retaliates, firing at the apes with precision. It is total bloodshed. Blue Eye sees his fellow brethren dying and struggling to survive. Koba then gets on one of the horses, picks up two rifles, and initiates a fierce one-person counterattack. Dreyfus immediately retaliates by firing a rocket launcher and slowing the push. However, the apes are slowly overwhelming the men with their numbers, pushing through the first line of defense. To Dreyfus's surprise, a tank flanks the apes eliminating a vast number of them. But Koba notices this, and with his uncanny maneuver, he is able to intercept the tank, and from there, the apes annihilate the defense. Dreyfus watches in terror, failing to protect his people from the invasion. The group finds the wounded Caesar in the woods, and they help take him to their truck. Caesar tells the confused group that an ape shot him, so they immediately head out. 
the horde of apes continues to chase the humans, running away, intending to capture them. A man bravely tries to slow the pursuit, but Koba knocks him down. Koba then commands one of the apes to finish the man off but refuses as he thought Caesar wouldn't want this. Angry, Koba drags the ape upstairs and throws him off the railing, killing him. Koba then incites fear to the rest of the doubtful apes, including Blue Eyes, telling them Koba is their new leader now. The apes successfully capture the remaining humans and take them somewhere for enslavement. Malcolm and the group arrive at an abandoned city Caesar was leading them to. Here, they found themselves at Caesar's past home, and the group discovered that he once lived with a man. Malcolm tells Ellie that he will go back to the settlement to retrieve the surgical kit needed to mend Caesar's wounds. The apes imprison the humans in cages, holding them captive. Koba sends out his apes to find other humans and capture them. Amidst the crowd, Blue Eyes, to his surprise, sees Maurice and other apes held prisoners as well for their loyalty to Caesar. Maurice tells Blue Eyes to protect himself. Malcolm arrives at the settlement and rushes his way in. Malcolm retrieves the medicine but finds difficulty on the way out as the apes approach his way. Malcolm tries his best to avoid them but is met by a silhouette of an ape holding a gun. The ape reveals himself to be Blue Eyes, who helps Malcolm upon hearing that Caesar is still alive. Blue Eyes and Caesar happily reunite, and Caesar tells Blue Eyes about Koba. Later that night, Caesar realizes his mistakes, his misplaced trust, and his view about humans and apes. Blue Eyes tells Caesar about Maurice, the prisoners, and Ash's death. Caesar is now desperate to stop Koba, and Blue Eyes is willing to help. The next day, Blue Eyes devises a plan to break the prisoned apes free. Later that night, Blue Eyes baits the guarding apes into the prison bus, and with the strength of Maurice and the others, they wipe out the guarding apes. Blue Eyes assists them, and they break free along with the rest of the human prisoners. Caesar finds himself reminiscing at his old home. He finds a camera and sentimentally watches a video of his time together with his good old friend. Malcolm walks in, and they chat for a while until Blue Eyes and the refugees arrive there. Blue Eyes tells Caesar that Koba is planning something terrible, so Caesar, Malcolm, and the rest of the apes immediately head for the settlement. In the tunnel, Malcolm meets Dreyfus but not before he tells the apes to take a pathway that leads directly towards the settlement and separating from the apes. Malcolm finds out that Dreyfus and his few left men plan to blow up the tower and that Dreyfus needs Malcolm's help. Malcolm is conflicted by this, so after thinking it through, he subtly takes a rifle and points it towards Dreyfus's team, telling them that they should give Caesar a chance. Caesar and the others arrive at the top of the tower where Koba and his lackeys are. The two have a short verbal standoff where they clash their views and throw insults. This ultimately leads to a one-on-one -on -one fight to prove who's stronger. Koba is aggressive, throwing punches on Caesar, and they both fall. Back on their feet, Koba pushes the attack and lands his punches onto Caesar, and they fall again along with some debris. Caesar is back on his feet, looks at Koba, who is now injured from the fall. Malcolm continues to stall time, trying to convince Dreyfus that he should give the apes a chance. The fight continues at the tower. Koba continues the attack with his metal rod while Caesar is on the defensive, jumping platform after platform. The run stops when Caesar picks up a metal stair step as a shield. Caesar tells Koba that he mistakenly trusted him like a brother. Koba tells Caesar that he only fights for the apes while continuing to attack the defensive Caesar. Caesar then refutes his statement, telling Koba that he only fights for himself. This infuriates Koba to the point of irrationality, and he continues to make attacks until his wound kicks in. This gives Caesar an opening to retaliate and strikes him hard on his wound. Caesar is now on the counterattack, parrying Koba until he is almost down. But Koba is still able to retaliate and fight. Malcolm continues to stall some more, but Dreyfus can finally distract him enough to make a quick move to grab the detonator. Dreyfus pauses for a while and tells Malcolm that he's only saving the human race, then proceeds to blow himself and his team along with the tower's foundation. Malcolm is able to avoid the explosion by jumping to a safe spot at the side of the tracks. The explosion interrupts the fight between Koba and Caesar, and it continues to make the tower collapse, increasing the casualties of apes above it. Caesar and his subordinates survive along with some apes. Koba survives as well, and he picks up a gun from one of the dying apes. Going for a desperate attempt, Koba tries to shoot Caesar and some apes who are helping the other injured apes. Koba hits Maurice, and this prompts Caesar to aggressively jump on the ferocious Koba, knocking him at the edge of the tower, and is now holding on to a damaged platform. Caesar approaches the platform, and Koba, desperate to live, reminds Caesar that apes don't kill each other. Caesar pulls Koba's hand as if trying to help him, but he takes one look at his injured man and comes to a simple conclusion, that Koba is no longer part of them. So Caesar lets go of Koba's arm, and Koba screamingly falls to his death. Caesar rallies the apes at the ground of the settlement. There he finds the apes dragging Malcolm out of the subway. Caesar tells the apes to leave Malcolm. Malcolm immediately informs Caesar that soldiers are coming and that the apes are in danger, telling them that they should go. Caesar acknowledges the wrongdoings of the apes, telling Malcolm that they had already started a war that humans will not simply forgive. Caesar tells Malcolm to go before the fighting begins. The two share their sentiments for a short while then Malcolm slowly leaves. Caesar and Blue Eyes happily reunite with the rest of the family, and the apes gather together. The apes then bow down to Caesar, acknowledging him as their rightful leader. Caesar stands in the face of the sunrise, lying in anticipation for the storm that's about to come.